welcome dear students to sis english classes today we will continue with the second chapter of flamingo lost spring the first part i have already explained to you i hope you all have followed and understood well today we are going to start with part 2 this part 2 of this chapter describes the miserable conditions of the bangal makers of ferozabad this story is about a boy whose name is mukesh mukesh belongs to a family of bangal makers in ferozabad it is the center of india's glass blowing industry where families have spent generations working around furnaces welding glass and making bangles this is the second encounter of the author when the author meets mukesh he says that he wants to drive a car mukesh wants to be his own master the author ask him if he knows anything about cars mukesh replies that he wants to learn to drive a car he is determined to achieve his dreams the author feels that his dream is like a mirage amidst the dusty streets of ferozabad when they make glass bangles lot of dust is produced his family has accepted this bitter truth further she says that the people of ferozabad are unaware with the fact that it is illegal for children to work in the glass furnaces with high temperatures in dingy cells without air and light as this comes under the law of child labor if the law is enforced it would rescue almost 20000 children who are engaged in this work often losing brightness of their eyes mukesh volunteers to take the author to his house they walk down stinking lanes choked with garbage he proudly announces that his house is being rebuilt they enter a half built shack where his elder brother's wife is cooking evening meal for the entire family she veils her face when mukesh's father enters as this is a tradition of respecting some elder person in the family mukesh's family believe in the god given lineage mukesh's father has toiled hard all his life according to him he has almost done everything to provide a satisfactory life He was unable to renovate his house or send his two sons to school. He compares himself with the other family of the bangle making makers in Ferozabad. Mukesh's grandmother has seen her husband go blind with the dust from polishing the glass bangles. She believes in destiny that is karma. As they were born in the caste of bangal makers they didn't have any other choice they have seen nothing but bangles around them of various colors they believe that this profession has been bestowed upon them by god they have accepted this fact this truth and they say that this god given lineage cannot be broken by anyone the lost spring they sit in dark huts next to the flickering oil lamps welding pieces of colored glass into circles of bangles the author finds that their eyes are more adjusted to the dark than to the light outside that is why they often end up losing their eyesight before they become adults The author knows, notices a young girl Savita sitting beside an elderly woman helping in making bangles her hands move like a machine Annie's junk wonders 
if she understands the sanctity of this glass ornaments for Indian women, these bangles signify that a woman's marriage is auspicious. The sad irony will suddenly dawn upon her, probably, when she will also get married. She will understand the significance and importance of these bangles. Daring, not a part of growing up. Mukesh's grandfather is happy that he has taught his children to earn their livelihood by this tradition of bangle making. Other than that, he has built a house to live in. His grandmother complains that she has never got enough food all her life. She never had an empty full stomach for herself, not a satisfied meal. The author asks a group of young men to organize themselves in a cooperative and try to improve their working conditions. These people tell her that they are afraid of the lawmakers, the policemen, the middlemen who would beat them for doing something illegal for no reason and then they would be sent to a jail. The author finds two distinct worlds in Ferozabad. One is the exploited family caught in particular caste, the imposition of family profession and poverty. The other is a vicious circle of those who exploit them. They include sahukars, the middlemen, the politician, the lawmakers, the policemen and the bureaucrats. To do something else would mean to dare. And these bangle makers were not allowed to follow their dreams. They could not do anything apart from this making bangles. If they dared to do so, so they were trapped in some illegal cases and they were sent to jail. At the end, the author finds a ray of hope. On the contrary, the author is filled with joy. As she can see, the spark in Mukesh's eye is still alive. As he thinks differently, the boy is filled with hope. He is willing to dare. The author questions him if he also dreams of flying a plane. Mukesh is embarrassed by listening this question. He replies in negative, as he has no clue about them, as there were not many aeroplanes flying over the town. He has seen many cars moving in the streets of Firozabad. So he is satisfied by his dream of becoming a motor mechanic. So children, you might have understood that this chapter Lost Spring, it is divided into two parts. Part 1 is about a rag picker boy, sahib -e alam And part 2 is about a boy, Mukesh, who belongs to a family of Bengal makers. These were the two encounters of the author. I have tried to include all the major points in this part too. Now further, I want you all to kindly go through the summary of the chapter. Thank you.